Spain has dominated football so much since the turn of the century. In every year between 2008 and 2012, a Spanish football club or the Spain national team ended up winning one of the major footballing trophies. During this period of four years, Spanish teams and the national team won two Euros, two Champions Leagues and one World Cup. They were really on top of the world. And, as expected because of how dominant they were, the Spanish league attracted the best players in the world. As at 2009, La Liga could boast of having Kaká, Benzema, Higuain, Aguero, Henri, Xavi, Ibrahimovic, Raul, Iniesta and, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Back then, when El Clasico came on, the entire world stood still. It was the apex of club football. Absolutely nothing came close. But fast forward to the present and it's a completely different tale. Apart from Madrid and Barcelona fans, hardly anybody's really concerned about the El Clasico these days. In Europe, things have also gotten really bad. In the Champions League this season, only one Spanish team managed to make it out of their group, and it was a similar story in the 2020-2021 season. Spain also had just one representative in the quarterfinals. This is a completely different story from what was the case in the 10 years between 2008 and 2018. During this period, Spanish clubs made it to the final in seven years, five of them coming in back-to-back -back years between 2013 and 2018. In fact, in two of those years, two Spanish clubs went head-to-head -head in the final. That's the quality we were used to back then, but all of that is fast fading away. So it begs the question, why is Spanish football fading away? Well, first of all, COVID-19. The economical effects of the pandemic hit a lot of the Spanish teams really badly, and they've struggled to find their feet since then. The biggest clubs, Barcelona and Real Madrid, have complained about how they were shaken by the effects of the pandemic. So imagine how much worse it has been for the smaller clubs. And the league is not making things any better for the clubs either. Javier Tebas, the president of La Liga, is proving to be a very tough and draconian leader. He has put some really stringent financial regulations in place which have heavily hampered the ability of the clubs in the league to sign players or even keep them. If you've been very observant, you'd have noticed that Gavi started this season wearing the number 30 at his back. Then, halfway into the season, he began wearing the number 6. But a few weeks later, he had to go back to wearing number 30. All of that because of Tebas and his crew. They told Barcelona that they don't have enough space in their wage bill to sign Gavi as a first-team player. So Barca had to put him back on his youth contract. What this means is that Gavi could could leave Barcelona and possibly La Liga as a free agent at the end of the season. If you remember, it was because of these same financial obstacles put in place by Javier Tebas that Messi was forced to leave Barcelona and La Liga in 2021. The league is basically just on self-destruction mode right now. The stringent and frankly unreasonable structures they put in place are causing them to lose their biggest players to neighbouring leagues. And if you keep losing your biggest players to nearby leagues, how on earth do you intend to keep competing with them? In just a space of four years, La Liga lost three of its biggest stars in Neymar, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi to Italy and France. The people in charge of the leagues are pretty much crippling the league with their own hands. Speaking of Ronaldo and Messi, these two were together in Spain for nine years, and during that period, La Liga was arguably the biggest league in the world. These two big stars brought a lot of success to Spain and also a lot of eyeballs, fans and sponsorship to the Spanish league. They alone made a truckload of money for and brought a lot of prominence to La Liga, but perhaps that was not a perfectly good thing. The league appeared to have been carried away by the success the two goats were bringing to the league that they failed to diversify. They became over-reliant on Ronaldo and Messi as the faces of the league that they failed to prepare for life after them. They never gave thought to how they were going to keep those eyeballs and those sponsors after Ronaldo and Messi left. They never put measures in place to make sure that their league was still enjoyable and competitive even after these guys left. 
All they were concerned about was the success that those guys were bringing at that time. But now they've both gone, the league appears to be suffering the consequences of their lack of planning. Less and less people watch La Liga games these days. Stats show that in the 2022-23 season, on average, more people go to watch Serie A games than La Liga games. The Italian top flight is averaging 29,701 spectators per game this season, while the Spanish top flight averages 28,978 spectators per game. More people are now watching Serie A games than La Liga games. It's like we're going back to the 90s. Clubs like Valencia and Sevilla, who used to be top teams in the country, are now embroiled in a relegation battle. That's how much the standards have dropped. And it's always going to be a big problem when your league is dominated by just one or two teams. It's why the French Liga 1 and the German Bundesliga are not very highly rated. Quality of games aside, the dominance of the big two in Spain is really crippling the other clubs financially. And when you're building up two to cripple 18, then you're effectively ruining your league. For example, there is a very uneven distribution of broadcasting rights between the big clubs and the other smaller clubs in the league. For the 2021-22 season, Barcelona and Real Madrid got $170 and $171 million respectively from TV rights. Atletico Madrid, who have been able to sort of establish themselves as a big club, got $139 million. The others had to feed on scraps. 10 of the other 17 clubs received less than $60 million, while clubs like Mallorca and Rayo Vallecano received less than $50 million. For context, clubs like Sevilla and Real Betis, which should be relatively big clubs in Spain, got about 300% less than what Madrid and Barcelona got. Meanwhile, in the Premier League in the 2020-21 season, Man City received the highest amount from TV rights, which was £153 million, while Sheffield United received the lowest, which was £96.5 million. That's £56.5 million between first first and 20th. In La Liga, it's a difference of about $40 million between first and third. That right there is one reason the Premier League is far more competitive than La Liga. The league looks after its smaller clubs and gives them room to grow. And that's why you can see smaller clubs posing a threat to the bigger ones and making the league generally more competitive and more interesting to watch. Honestly, a lot of this just looks like self-sabotage by La Liga themselves. They failed to plan for life after Ronaldo and Messi they're failing to build up the smaller teams to be able to compete with the big two, and they're putting stringent financial laws which are driving away their best players and making it difficult for the clubs to bring in big players. You guys remember that La Liga had prime Ronaldo and Messi, but they somehow could not even convince the big two of the new generation, Mbappe and Haaland, to join their league last summer. Because of these same laws, Barcelona nearly sold Frankie de Jong last summer and could lose Gavi this summer. Right now, Messi seems poised to return to La Liga in the summer. But there's still a cloud over that because the structural obstacles placed by La Liga could make it impossible for Barcelona to pay his wages. For them to be able to, they might have to sell some of their big players at the club right now. This, for sure, is not benefiting La Liga and Spanish football in general. So Javier Tebas and the rest of his team better sit up and do something about Spanish football. If not, it could find itself being nothing much better than the French Liga 1 in the next few years. Or who knows, maybe he'll have to leave for things to get better. Already, Barcelona fans and stakeholders have started asking for Tebas to step down. Let's see how that develops, and if that's the solution to the current problems La Liga is facing. But what do you guys think though? Is Spanish football really fading away? Or is this just all in our heads? Let us know what you think in the comments. If you agree that it is fading away, do well to recommend some possible solutions the Spanish league could adopt. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye!